Gail. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, welcome to tonight's town council meeting for Monday, December 2nd, 2019. Uh, Councillor uh, Parker, uh, would you lead us in uh, Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, first, I just want to take a uh, um, point of personal privilege today to uh, um, just give a... Uh, um, <coughs> Brief um, condolences to the family of Lee Sikas, who um, passed away uh, last week. For those that uh, don't know Lee, he was a, uh, an advocate for a number of uh, um, organizations and uh, commissions here in town. Uh, I got to know Lee uh, personally on the Memorial Day Parade Committee. He was the uh, gentleman who went through the Hartford Current every single day to look for um, obituaries of Weathersfield veterans who had passed away. Um, those who have gone to the ceremony on Veterans Day know that uh, we read off the names of everybody who's passed away from uh, Weathersfield and Lee took um, uh, a lot of time to, uh, to compile that list uh, after year after year. He was also a member of the uh, Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities and um, Lee had come before this council uh, a number of times to uh, advocate on behalf of those with disabilities, <clears throat> uh, sidewalks, uh, crossing, uh, road crossings, and um, access to, uh, to town buildings were a priority for him and for the disabled community. Uh, if uh, I could, um, if it, I actually, before I you know, call for a moment of silence, I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything on behalf of the town who had worked with uh, Lee in the past. Um, if not, can I get uh, just a moment of silence on Lee's passing? Thank you. And uh, aside from that, um, attendance by Dolores. Councilor Morin. Bellow. Here. Councilor Pleron again. Here. Councilor Forrest. Here. Councilor Hill. Here. Councilor Mazzarella. Here. Councilor Parker. Here. Councilor Penelo. Here. Deputy Mayor Hurley is unable to attend. And Mayor Ralph. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Dolores. Uh, we do have a presentation from Derek from uh, Engineering. Uh, I appreciate you coming before us tonight. Thanks for the patience. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. My name is Derek Greger. I'm the town engineer. I'm here tonight to uh, just give you a brief overview of what the engineering division does here in town and also to give you some uh, updates and some information on some of our larger projects that we have going on right now. Our engineering division is staffed by five full-time employees and one part-time. Um, we provide project management, survey, design, construction, inspection, drainage assistance, uh, any kind of technical resources uh, for town commissions, town departments, um, other staff. Um, we help out the public uh, when we can. Um, we often do inspections at the site to look at drainage issues and try and address problems that may come up in the right of way. Um, as a group, we issue licenses and permits, so every contractor working in the right of way comes in once a year and gets a license from the engineering division. Every time they're gonna go out and cut a road, we uh, have them come in and get a general excavation permit so we know what they're doing and they know they have our standards that's what the expectations are for um, for rehabilitating what they're doing every year we administer the annual paving program um, that includes road milling reconstruction uh, pavement overlays 
Typically, the uh, last few years we've been doing two to four years, uh, two to four miles of road every year, and that, the, the difference in that really depends on what type of work we're doing. If we're doing just milling work, we can do more roads. If we have roads that have deteriorated so much that we cannot just mill off some of the pavement and repave it, we have to do a full reconstruction. Obviously, there's more cost associated with that, but that sometimes when we get into that situation, we may not get as much done. So that's why it varies year to year. Uh, we administer the annual program for crack sealing and painting of pavement markings. That's for all local roads and all public parking lots. Uh, we manage the annual sidewalk maintenance repair program. Town has an on-call contractor that does sidewalk repairs um, along town properties or in front of private properties where town trees have caused issues. Um, we also have our, our part-time employees, our part-time sidewalk inspector, so he manages that as best he can. He also does sidewalk inspections for defects. Um, as you're aware, I'm sure you're aware, uh, in Weathersfield here, property owners are responsible for their sidewalks in front of their house. So when there is an issue, um, when, to the extent we can each year, we issue notices to the homeowner, kind of work with them to have them uh, make the repairs to address it. Um, so that's a process that we go through as much as we can each year. A review pro proposed land development applications for planning, zoning, inland wetlands, historic district, zoning board of appeals, whatever might come in. Um, we do technical reviews for that. We also manage and update the town GIS, which is the geographic information system, which is the mapping we have available on the town website that has planimetric features, um, drainage information, water, sewer, other, uh, other things we use both from an engineering design perspective and just to be available to the public. Um, we, have a, we have that available. It's nice when people come in. We have it up on the counter, on a computer, and we can kind of look at what their, what their concern is and try and help address the issues. And we also have staff that serves as the liaison to Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission and for the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee. So with that, that's just kind of an overall summary of what we do. So I'm just talking, like I said, about a few of our major projects that we have going on. Um, as I mentioned, the annual paving program, that is funded each year through a local tax levy. Uh, that's combined with uh, town aid road funds and local capital improvement funds, LOSIP, that we receive from the state. Historically, the towns in recent years have been spending about $1.2 million a year on the paving program. Um, the last two years, town council has increased that by $300,000, so we've been able to spend a little bit more and do some more roads. So we've been spending about $1.5 million. Um, right now, as far as roads we're doing, we're currently working within a five-year plan that was developed a few years ago, and that goes through 2022. When we develop a plan, uh, that plan is approved by the Paving Advisory Committee. That's comprised of uh, residents, uh, five residents that are the same members as the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee. So usually staff will go through a process of defining which roads we feel are going to be the best bang for the buck and in the most need. Um, sometimes those don't go hand in hand. Sometimes we need to pass on roads that really need it because we've we got to focus on geographic areas or other things, utility projects that are coming up. So. Um, with that, we usually present that to that committee, and then they make the final decision on which roads we're going to be paving. Um, as far as how we contract our paving, milling, and reclamation work, we use the uh, state bid. Every year the state goes out uh, to bid for contractors, and in the area we're in, we'll review the contractors that bid for the Weathersfield sector um, and use, the, use that because we found over the years that tends to be the most cost effective because they're bidding on a large state project for a lot of work. Municipalities often will piggyback off of that, and, and we get better pricing than we would get typically if we go out to bid as a, just a year-by-year -year type of thing. Um, we have a couple other contractors that work with us through that program. Uh, drainage curb, driveway aprons are done by General Paving. Um, they've been working for the town for a number of years. They're currently working under a contract that expires at the end of 2021. Um, they're an extension of town staff. Uh, they work very well with us, both managing uh, the work that happens before we get to paving and then what has needs to happen after we get to paving. Um, so they've been working with us. Usually we do programs, usually it's spring and fall. Sometimes we have a summer program. So it's usually two or three per year. Um, the other contractor that's uh, been more involved lately is our sidewalk contra contractor, who's Martin Lavero. Their contract ends the end of this month. So we'll be putting that out for a uh, new solicitation over the winter. Um, one of the things that Department of Justice requires is when you alter a road and that includes milling and paving, you have to upgrade the sidewalk ramps or make sure they are ADA compliant. So in a lot of instances when we're doing roads now, we are also doing the adjoining ramps. If the ramps are in good condition and they're at the adequate slope, um, if, there's, if we could just cut in a warning tile, those are the bump tiles you see at them, 
we do that. So we do as least as we have to do. Um, but it does certainly help to help us get more uh, ramps in place for pedestrian crossings and ADA accessibility because we do it in conjunction with that program. Those funds are funded separately through CIP and operating budget, um, but we have been getting funds allocated the last few years so we can do that. As far as the fall paving program this year where we, we've recently finished up in the last few weeks, we did have a couple roads on the list which were Mill Street and Executive Square. Um, those will be completed in the spring. Um, it just got to be too late in the season. We were trying to jockey our schedule around MDC who had the large Golf Brook Sanitary Sewer Project at the south end of town. That ran a little longer than we thought and then for us to be able to get in and get contractor schedule at the end of the year became a little difficult. So with that and some other considerations for construction going on in the area, we, we pulled out Mill Street and Executive Square, but those will be done in the spring. Talk a little bit about our local transportation capital improvement program. It's called LOTSIP. Um, Connecticut DOT has funds that are available periodically. They're administered through the Capital Region Council of Governments, known as CROG. In May of 2018, they solicited applications. Municipalities were allowed a maximum of two applications, a minimum of $300,000, a total maximum of $3 million for the two. The way that program works is 100% construction funding is paid by the state. Towns are responsible for survey design work to get it to that point. They had separate uh, pots of money. Some is for road reconstruction, some is for pavement rehabilitation, some could be for sidewalk and bike improvements. We opted for two projects that were in two different categories so they weren't competing against each other. Um, those were our first two the town had submitted and we got uh, them both were awarded. So the first one is reconstruction of Wolka Hill Road from Jordan Lane. Uh, to Victoria Road, just north of the Hartford line. We're going to be receiving just under $2.7 million for that project. Um, I'll talk a little bit about it, uh, these two projects in just a minute. Um, we're anticipating construction on that will be in 2021 uh, and or 2022. The other project that was awarded is Highland Street Pavement Rehab. That's going to occur from the Rocky Hill <laughs> Town Line extending north up to Thornbrush Road. That's, that project is uh, just under a million dollars that we're going to be getting in state funds. Anticipated construction and for that one is later in 2020. So let me just um, give you a little overview of what those are. So what you see here on the screen is our, our Wilka Hill Road project. Um, the left side of the screen is Jordan Lane. North is to the right. Uh, this line you see here in Cyan is the town line, and then this is Victoria Road <coughs> here. So. The road's going to remain very similar to what it is now. Um, one thing we're looking to do is add bike lanes in each direction. So we're going to narrow the travel lanes a little bit to help control speeds and also provide bike lanes in both the northbound and southbound directions. This is kind of a, uh, this road's a main gateway into and out of town. It serves the region. Department of Labor, Department of Corrections are both on this road. So what this, what we're, what's required out here is uh, what we have is an old concrete road base beneath the pavement. If many of you, I'm sure, have driven on it. It's in very bad shape. We have a lot of potholes forming in different areas that's usually occurring where the joints and the slabs um, are, are located. So the only way really to fix that properly, it's not something we could do where we do a typical mill and overlay or a reclaim project where we grind up the pavement and reutilize it as base material. We have to do a full excavation. So we have to dig out those concrete, that concrete road base put in new processed aggregate base and new pavement section. Um, while we're doing that, uh, we're going to add some, I mentioned some um, complete street elements, bike lanes, new sidewalk ramps, pedestrian refuges. As you cross the island right now, these, these are the old crossings near the intersection. We're going to move them back a little bit, give uh, people a place to stand kind of in the middle. The islands and trees are going to remain. Um, one of the things we worked into this project because we're essentially extending Franklin Ave further south, um, we put in to have granite curb put in as part of the project. Um, that, if you've been out there, these curbs take a beating, they get plowed, the curb gets knocked around quite a bit. Granite curb would be more durable, have a nice look, and it'll be very consistent with um, what you see uh, coming in and out of Hartford. So when we applied for this, uh, we had talked a lot with uh, Hartford and CT Transit. Um, we are going to do some bus improvements here where we're going to have an extra wide location here in front of the Department of Corrections. Um, so we could park a couple buses there when they need to. So we did try and work in some bus improvements, new bus pads, new sidewalk ramps as part of the project. DOT at this point has issued a commitment to fund letter. Um, I had come before uh, the council uh, a couple months ago to talk about it. In that meeting, they accepted the award from the state. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the town is responsible for 100% design and funding. 
Uh, with that particular project, the scope um, is just beyond what we can do in, in house with staff. Uh, we just don't have, we're not, I would love to do this project, we're just not staffed up well enough to do it. So we had, uh, re had a request for $200,000 in road funds to be applied to the design, because this is the type of project, unless we get these, this kind of state money, it's very unlikely we would do it. Um, you know, as I said, we spend about 1.2, 1.5 million a year on roads. This is a couple years worth of paving just to do one segment of road, and that's not likely to happen. So this is really, uh, it's good for the town to be able to get the funds. Um, there's a small investment in design, although I feel that that's well worth it um, for the, what we're getting in return. So right now, the plan, just to give you an update, um, we're going to plan to issue an RFP for engineering consultant design over the winter, get that process started. Um, there's going to be a lot involved. They've got to do survey. There's going to be some, some subsurface investigation work that needs to be done. There's going to be permitting that we have to go through, multiple reviews with CROG and DOT um, to go through this process. So I'm, in, I'm expecting this to take about a year to get through design. That's why I'm planning for a 2021-2022 um, construction period for this to be realistic as to when we can get it done. Um, we will provide, uh, you know, luckily we have a split lane, so we should be able for construction. I think we can manage it by having traffic on one side of the road during while they work on one side and then flip-flop as needed. Um, as part of the design, I'm going to have them look at a traffic study to see there's two lanes going northbound, one coming southbound. Um, we do have those state facilities on this road. I'm just going to have them evaluate if there's really a need for two going northbound or if there's some opportunity there to provide some more uh, green space or to better organize it so we don't have two lanes of traffic. Because as you move north through the project, they taper off and becomes one lane as you get to Franklin Avenue. So that's something we'll do as part of it. So that's just a quick overview of our Wolka Hill Road project. The next one here is our Highland Street uh, pavement rehab project. So what you're looking at here is north is to the right, Highland Street. This is the town line with Rocky Hill. This is Hayes Road. We're going north through the intersection of Hangdog Lane and Two Rod Highway, continuing north over here and up to the intersection with Thornbush Road. This is the 1860 Reservoir over, the, over in this area. So this is, kind of, this is a main arterial road, serves Weathersfield, Rocky Hill, and Newington. Very high traffic volume. Um, we had uh, worked with DOT during the application process uh, after it was selected as a project. And what we're going to be doing is milling out two and a half inches of pavement. So we're going to come through and grind out two and a half inches. We're going to put back three and a half inches. Um, the reason for the extra pavement going back is it's going to get us um, a longer design life on the road, which is a requirement of the funding program. As part of it, um, one of DOT's uh, suggestions to help with connectivity was to uh, extend the sidewalk that exists right now at the south end of the road. We're looking at about 320 feet of sidewalk that would extend from the existing walk here south to the town line. We'd have a crossing at this location um, with a crosswalk and handicap ramps and appropriate signage um, right at the town line. So some of this work, a little bit of it, is in Rocky Hill. Um, they're aware of it. They were, uh, you know, in, they approved of the project and are happy we were getting the money to do it. In addition to the mill and overlay, there will be some curb and some driveway apron replacement as needed. Um, at this point, DOT has issued a commitment to fund letter, as you're aware. I'll be up later just to talk about it. I'm looking for acceptance of the award of $987,600. Um, with this one, the scope of work is uh, simpler, a lot simpler than Wolka Hill Road. Um, I felt it's something we, we could do in-house. Um, it's, it's very similar to the mill and overlay projects we do, although we do have to go through a whole bidding process with this because of the type of funding it is. So with this, we're going to do the surveys already been started in-house. We'll do the design. I'm hoping to get it out to bid this year and have it done by the end of the construction season at this point. Um, this one should go a little quicker because it's a lot simpler and there's less uh, coordinating with DOT and CROG as we go through the design process. Um, but with, similar with this one as to Wolka Hill Road, we're going to be restriping so we narrow the lanes. We're going to provide lanes on each side as bike lanes um, to provide a little extra space, new sidewalk ramps, and um, tying in at Thornbush Road. We will have a segment of Highland Street that is a little older from this point going south or east rather to Collier Road. Um, because we're doing this in the segment to the, to the east of that had it been done in recent years, I'm going to try and get this segment of Highland Street done kind of around the same time so we can have a pretty good pavement condition because I do get a lot of complaints or have over the years about Highland Street. Yes. Derek, uh, question on the sidewalk. If you could just move okay. back, you're putting that. What's the thought process behind, behind uh, adding that sidewalk? It appears it's going to nowhere. 
Yeah, it doesn't show up too much here on the screen. So on the, uh, see where, so north is to the right. So on the west side of Hayes Road in Rocky Hill, there is a sidewalk that runs south in Rocky Hill. And there's some neighborhoods up in there. There's a park across the street on the east side of the road. So the thought was right now we just have, we have nothing there. So there's a gap. So the idea was to close the gap. Um, it provides interconnectivity for Rocky Hill and Weathersfield. And then there. would you make a crosswalk there? Yeah, we're going to make a crosswalk at that location. Right. Okay, so that's a general overview of our two lots of projects that are um, funded and uh, ready to get going. So uh, next I was just going to talk a little bit about uh, Bell Pond Dam. Um, back in 1995, the town had a watershed management study done uh, town-wide. It identified a number of drainage projects that needed to be done. At the time, DEP had uh, money set aside for drainage and flood projects for multiple municipalities, uh, Weathersfield being one of them. Um, so that, this particular dam was identified as an issue back then. It has structural issues that need to be addressed. This is located just uh, downstream of, uh, of uh, Millwoods Park, uh, upstream of Route 3. So if you're traveling north on Route 3, it's to your left as you get to uh, Mill Street intersection. It's up in that neighborhood. So it has some structural repairs that need to be done. In 2003, the town had a preliminary design done by a consultant. Um, it didn't move forward at the time. Um, since then, in 2007, we had a uh, watershed study done for the Gough Brook watershed, which recommended in addition to dam improvements that there were needs for pond dredging, um, which you may hear about. There are a number of ponds in town that have filled up with sediment over the years and do require dredging. This is one of them, one of five for this study that was identified as needing that. So it needs some pond dredging, um, some sediment control measures, some enhancement of plantings. Um, in 2016, the DEP now requires municipalities for dams that they own to have them inspected periodically. The frequency is based on how, what, what kind of a hazard class it is. We have nine dams in town. Um, of the ones that were inspected, this one was rated the worst condition structurally. It also, um, because of its location, being above Route 3, being above Silas Dean Highway, if we had a dam breach or a failure, um, it's going to have more catastrophic consequences than, it may, than other dams may have located in other areas. So, um, in 2018, the State Bond Commission agreed to release the remaining $978,000 of funds that was left over from the projects that were done um, back in the 90s. I know the town has been for many years trying to get that released. So they've agreed to release that. Uh, the town has already allocated in previous years $188,000, which was our match for that money. Um, so we got a little over $1.1 million. So the intent with that is we're starting to move that forward. Um, we're going to get. We're going to have our the engineering and survey that's already been done since it's so old. We got to recheck it and verify and see what needs to be updated. Um, we're looking at doing structural dam repairs with the money. That's the priority. Secondary to that, as much as we can, I want to do some pond dredging and enhancement. That was also um, part of recent studies and the initial studies done uh, many years ago. That would be helpful for flood control, as well as just the uh, quality of the water and the dam and the aesthetics. So at this point, our preliminary scope of work for putting it out to an RFP to get a consultant on board is currently with the EEP. Um, we're waiting for them to respond. Um, once we do, we can start moving that forward. Construction date is very hard to determine. Um, as I said, the money was announced late 2018. We're late 2019, and we're you know, just getting that process going. So I don't know exactly how quickly we can move. Obviously, I'd like to move as quickly as we can. We know we have a structural issue out there. It's been there for many years, but I don't want to let it go longer than we have to. Um, so we're going to do our best to move that forward as quickly as we can um, once DEP is okay with it. All right. A couple more things. So this is uh, DOT's Community Connectivity Grant Program. Um, we had submitted an application um, for that. This is also funding from Connecticut Department of Transportation. Uh, the intent of the program is really to improve conditions for walking and bicycling in community centers. So we worked with the planning department. It was a joint effort between engineering and planning. We submitted an application for locations in Old Weathersfield back in 2017. Um, that had a maximum award value of $400,000. Um, similar to LOTSIP, it's 100% construction funding. Town pays for design. Uh, we were awarded $393,000 out of the 400 maximum. So for that money, we had identified a number of projects. There's 11 different locations in Old Weathersfield that could use uh, improvements. Some of them are more involved intersection geometric redesigns. Some of them are just putting in new crosswalks <laughs> and new ramps at certain locations. 
Um, some areas were teeing up intersections. So it, it varied all, throughout all the projects, but we, the conglomerate of all those projects was, a, was an estimated cost of 393000 So that is uh, just starting underway. Um, we're starting out with some of the survey and design. I'm anticipating the projects are not overly complex, so I'm hoping to be able to do that in-house um, to try and save money in that respect. So because that process also goes through a DOT review process and it's been a little bit slow getting going, um, it's hard to say, but I'm hoping to maybe get the design and approvals and maybe there'll be some public information meetings held throughout this next coming year um, with the hopes that we can do some of the work in 2021, ideally, or if not 2022, depending on how quickly the process moves. And then the last thing I, I wanted to just make you aware of um, is a new MS4 permit, it's called. So that's a municipal separate storm sewer system permit. 2017, DEP issued a new permit that replaced the one that was in place since 2004. Um, one of the things with this permit is they're looking for more um, responsiveness from towns to address water quality issues. So one of the things they want is us to follow these best management practices, and I've outlined them here. You know, some of it is just um, you know, making the public more aware of not to dump down drains, using over overuse of pesticides, things like that. We have been trying to promote both through pamphlets, online, um, different methods for meeting these requirements. Um, one of the big ones is the illicit discharge detection and elimination. So I'll talk a little bit about that, but that is looking at where we have illicit connections or connections that should not be connected to our storm sewer system, identifying where they are and getting them disconnected. Um, it's also construction site management, post-construction management, um, pollution prevention for our facilities that are town-owned facilities in town. Um, some of that involves going through, we're going through a process right now up to inland wetland regulations to make them a little bit stronger and more compliant with what the permit's going to require. So developers, as they come in, they know and their engineers know kind of what they need to do for water quality treatment to help improve. The idea is to improve the quality of the water coming off of impervious areas in each town, um, as well as trying to reduce the amount of impervious area because the more paved or roof or impervious surfaces you have, the more runoff you get. So the program tries to tackle both of those. Um, some of the major tasks have included doing town drainage mapping, um, which we've done most of. We've done some wet and dry weather outfall sampling, investigations of illicit connections, and reducing that directly connected impervious area. So as part of an eye, this is a five-year permit. So every year the town staff puts together an annual report, which goes to deep on April 1st of each year. We're currently working on our illicit discharge detection and elimination plan, which is required by the permit. Um, it, it's a follow-up to our stormwater management plan that we developed a couple years ago that was required by the permit. So that's going to talk a little bit more about how the town is uh, going to try to limit illicit discharges from its water stormwater systems. Just recently, um, within the last year, we did do some drainage sampling um, at 19 outfalls near the Connecticut River. Um, that was required because uh, luckily for town, our only impaired water, as they call it, is the Connecticut River. So towns that have impaired waters have to figure out why those water courses are impaired. For us, luckily, it's just the Connecticut River, which every town up and down the river has that issue. Um, it has a bacterial impairment. So that's what we're, we're looking for in town is what kind of bacteria are we contributing to the river. Um, we tested 19. We did find a number of them had some pretty high results. Um, so with that, our next step is to figure out how we can uh, determine what's causing that. It could be sanitary uh, sewer system discharges to the system, which are rare but could happen. It could be a house or a number of houses that might be tied into the, the stormwater system that should be going to the sanitary sewer system. So it's a, it's, a, it's a complex process to try and figure out what's going on, and we're just starting that. Um, I've enlisted some UConn students that are looking for a senior project um, to help us get going on that. Where they're going to look at one of the worst outfalls we have as far as high hits and the bacteria and have them do some of the legwork for us to try and isolate where these areas might be. Um, the town's been good about this. I mean, uh, my predecessor knew this permit was coming, so he started allocating some CIP funds to it, knowing that this was going to um, be needed. Right now, we've been kind of more in the place of let's figure out, we need to figure out what's going on, and then we're going to have to address it. So the cost of that is going to be, could be minimal if it's a simple thing, or it could be quite costly. We don't know that yet. Um, DEP recognizes that municipalities are strapped for cash, so everything we do with the permit is they call it to the MEP to the maximum extent possible. 
Um, so we do keep that in mind when we're doing things. We, we do as much as we can. Um, I think, you know, I think we've been, you know, we've been doing pretty well about keeping ahead of the curve and, and um, hitting our targets where we are so far. So that's a process we're about in the middle of right now. We've got a few more years to go. Um, one of the challenging things with this is they're looking for every town to reduce their impervious area by 2% every year. Well, over the course of the permit, um, that's kind of challenging because we have so much, you know, you look up and down, we have so much impervious area to reduce 2% is quite a bit. I think a lot of municipalities are going to struggle with that, but that's part of the regulation changes that we're doing. Yes. Uh, when you're talking about impervious, uh, are you talking about town-owned parking lots, roads, uh, private, public? Yeah, everything? when we when we look at it, it's all um, impervious cover in town except for state facilities and state roads. So that, that gets backed out of the calculation. So. Overall, as a town-wide assessment, when they look at that, they look at all the impervious except state roads and facilities. Um, however, individual systems on, it, on private lots, we address the water quality issues with them and the impervious cover reductions to the extent we can during when we have development applications, redevelopment applications that come in to try and manage that as best we can. But overall, it's supposed to be a combination of either A, what the town can do through its town projects, or B, what we can control with our regulations as far as private development goes. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. So that was, those were the, the big items that we had going on. Um, I wanted to come in and just give you an update. Some of you are new, so you kind of get an idea what, what we have going on, and some of you have heard it before, but you get an update as to where we are with things. Um, happy to answer any questions anyone might have. If I may, um, the lots of grants and the C CCGP grants, how uh, what is like the, the process in terms of how the town goes out uh, to get these awards? How often are we eligible? And obviously the process is very long, um, but can you just briefly kind of explain how that works? The, uh, they solicit applications periodically. <clears throat> LATSIP, it really depends on how the state funds are going. Um, I, when they did that solicitation in 2018, I've been hearing if, if enough money is allocated through the state, they may do it again next year. So it's a periodic process. Um, usually, you know, we keep our ears to the ground as to what's available. Um, yeah. You know, there's a lot of competition these days because, you know, everybody's strapped for cash. So, you know, what we try and do is really look at what the program is for LOTSIP. They're looking for uh, regional benefits, uh, connectivity to other municipalities, bike pet improvements. So we try and pick a project that can incorporate as much of what they're looking to see into a project. And that helps with our ratings because you're getting ranked basically against other municipalities that are doing it. And do you always have to have the kind of the next project kind of in the back of your? Yeah, we have ideas on what we could come come with next. What what, what comes? Um, Walker Hill Road. If you lived in town a while, has been an issue for a long time. Um, so this was a good opportunity to find a way to address that on you know on with state funds rather than local funds. You know, so generally, that's how that's our process. Um, plan, you know, we, we don't <clears throat> just work with engineering. We talk with the town manager's office. We talk with planning, physical services. You know, we um, from time to time, when we have one of these applications come in, we'll get together and talk about options and you know who's got ideas, who thinks you know what's going to fit the best for that particular funding program. Thank you. Sure. Councilman Bella. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple a couple of things. The sidewalks, how do other towns um, have sidewalks paid for, repairs and replacements? I know in Weathersfield we have our homeowners pay for it, um, but I've heard from residents that that's not the case in other municipalities. How does it work in other places? I can't speak to everywhere, but I do know uh, some of the local communities do the same thing as we do, where it is put on the homeowner. Um, sometimes it's fully funded by the homeowner. Sometimes. They have a program where there might be a 50-50 program where the town will pay half and the homeowner will pay half. Um, other municipalities um, handle sidewalks themselves, and if there's issues, they, they pay to do it. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say I could speak in detail about which municipalities are doing what, but I know there's kind of a mixture in the region as far as how that's handled. Okay. Um, and the 300000 that was added to um, the road fund in the last two years, how much road was... How much road were you able to um, mill overlay um, with that with money? Additional funds. Mm -hmm. I can't say I can speak to that up here. I'd have to look. Um, I know we we had for a time had some pretty a pretty decent backlog in funds in in the program mm -hmm. where we had six eight hundred thousand that we had talked about here internally. Let's spend that down. So 
We've been more aggressive in recent years, trying not to carry so much contingency sure. so we can get more done. Um, you know, I would, I would say just one thing off the top of my head, I know Charter Road was one of the roads that we got a lot of complaints about, really really needed it. The cost of that is probably in the 250 ish range. So that $300,000 like helped us get that road done this year where we mm -hmm. might have had to postpone it to a different year. So, you know, it's, it's definitely been beneficial. What's difficult, why it's hard to answer is because it depends if we're doing mill and overlay. We did all, we do, sure. we've been tending to find roads as we've talked, because some of our roads have deteriorated so far, we can't mill and overlay them. It's more costly, so we have to get into more re reconstruction, which we've been doing some more of that um, than we may have historically done. And it might have to do just with, A, the roads are getting older and we're trying to play catch up a little bit and uh, just be geographically where they are or where they stand right now, so. Mm -hmm. But I can, you know, I can give you some more information on that. Yeah, I just, I, it's, it's always good for, um, for counselors and residents to realize how much a hundred, an additional $100,000 can get you in the road fund, because I think um, we'll probably, we can probably all agree that roads are one of the biggest complaints residents have in town, and um, anything we can do to try to help that problem is a good thing so it was just it would be interesting to know how many you know what kind of a, a metric you have for a hundred thousand dollars worth of, of funding yeah I could do that I could you know I'd say the you know what I probably could do is look at that and say you know if we were to mill a road how many extra feet of road sure. would that get us um, that would mm -hmm. be something I could, I could mm -hmm. do for you yeah um, and then just a couple comments I was driving down Follybrook the other day and I noticed um, how great those calming, the traffic calming measures are on that road. So I'm glad to see some of those incorporated on Highland Street when that project comes about. Um, just narrowing the road visually with the, um, the line striping really makes traffic seem to go slower on Folly Brook. You that know, is, I know uh, it's, op it's an optic, mm -hmm. but it's, um, it's a good one for helping to slow traffic on some of the roads in town. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, this was for Gary, but there was a conversation we were going to have with um, the DOT about the Berlin Turnpike by a HEPA looking for a crosswalk and some kind of um, a, a crossing signal there um, because there's a bus issue. And so it sort of ties in with the engineering. They'd have to figure out some kind of a crosswalk there. But we have residents who live at a HEPA who um, are only able to take the bus one way because the bus won't drop them off the other way because it's a safety issue crossing to get back into a HEPA, so. Um, what intersection is that along Berlin Turnpike, you said? It's, it's when the Berlin Turnpike continues. It's before, it's where a HEPA is on the Berlin Turnpike as you go down to Jordan Lane okay. um, to stop and shop, okay. the Jordan Lane stop and shop. Um, the bus stops in front of a HEPA when they're heading northbound, so it brings those residents to the stop and shop. They get their groceries, and these are elderly people, and they get their groceries at stop and shop, and then they get back on the bus, and they have to go all the way to Market Square in Newington, get off one bus, get on another bus to get back to a HEPA again heading northbound to get dropped off in front of a HEPA because they even though they pass a HEPA yep. going southbound but it's not safe to cross there so it was just something that residents had complained about and it warrants a conversation with the DOT to see if there's some kind of a crosswalk situation that could be implemented there to make it safe yeah we have contacts with DOT and CT transit that I could reach out to to discuss what's going on out there Sure. Yeah, that would be great. And then the last thing is I do want to thank the former deputy mayor. He was instrumental in getting that um, 2018 state bond funding for the Bell Pond Dam. I know he had it was a priority for him when he worked in the engineering department and when he was on council. So I'm happy to see that that was released last year and hope the project can get going soon. Sure. Thank you for the information tonight. You're welcome. Derek, just to piggyback off of what um, Councilwoman Bellow had said, with Bell Pond, is there a, uh, a list of other dams afterwards that will be done? I mean, I know, as you said, it's kind of like the highest of the dams going down all the way into uh, Mill Woods. Yes, we is do. Is there any of them that are a priority over another, or is Bell Pond truly a priority? Uh, I'd say Bell Pine is truly the priority right now. Um, we do have priority lists for other dams that need some repairs. Um, some of the dams, uh, the repairs are minor enough. I'm going to try and get some CIP funds to, to do them. Um, some are more extensive. 
Uh, I think our second in line would be Murphy Pond. Those, Bell Pond and Murphy Pond were the two that were identified as the two priorities mm -hmm. a number of years ago. Yep. Um, I agree that Bell Pond would be the, the highest, and then the next one we would look at is Murphy Pond, both from the um, dam condition, the uh, spillway condition, and the dredging sediment sedimentation issue, because I do get a lot of complaints about sedimentation uh, as well. You know, gotcha. probably more, that's, that's more of a um, aesthetic issue that residents notice and, and care about more, but you know, obviously we gotta look for the structural issues too. So that's why Bell Pond, we're gonna tackle the structural issues and do as much of the dredging and improvements as we can around the pond. Okay, thank you. Uh, Derek, the, uh, you talked about the five-year plan for paving. Um, do you guys do uh, like an annual update uh, if the roads or some roads are deteriorating faster than you anticipated? It's, I know I've looked at a couple roads, they weren't even close to being uh, getting towards the top and they were in pretty rough shape. Yeah, we do. I mean, there's flexibility in it. Um, the normal process is uh, over the winter time, we'll kind of reevaluate where we are with that. Uh, I mentioned the CIAC. Uh, capital Advisory Committee is also the Paving Advisory Committee. So usually when we finish the capital advisory process, we'll, we'll have a discussion about the paving in early February with that group to talk about if there needs to be any changes. Um, sometimes roads yeah, get added in, other ones get moved around. Sometimes they get moved around because utilities, you know, gas company, water, um, MDC, might come up with a, plan, uh, a project that we let them know as far in advance as we can, but sometimes they come up last minute and we need to change things, which happened this past year, we did some shuffling. So yeah, there's, a, there's some flexibility in that to allow us some, some of that, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Councilor Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I was looking at the bike lanes that you were designated, designating for the, the new construction areas. Is there a master plan that you guys work from in order to connect those bike lanes to others so that a biker could really be portable mm -hmm. on major arterial roads in Weathersfield? Yeah, right now, uh, the last year, year and a half, uh, the planning department's been heading up a bike, bicycle pedestrian plan that's under development right now. Um, so I've been part of that as well. So there is a plan to look at bike and ped improvements townwide on a townwide basis, so we can have, have those types of connections that we're looking for. So that's still in development, but that is underway. It, what is there? I mean, what is the timing for that? Because it would seem it seems some, somewhat awkward, although it is, of course, traffic calming to have you know 300, 500 meters of road that's nice, and then you just go into this sort of abyss of traffic if you're a biker. Is there line striping or some funds that you're putting aside so that you can start to make connections to vital points in town or nodes as we sort of have been planning out for years? Yeah, and that's, um, <clears throat> I wanna say we're, we're pretty far along in the process. That's something that um, we'll be discussing, I'll be discussing more with you it, because um, yes, we can, add, we can add line striping on a lot of roads that would resolve or provide that opportunity. Um, it's just a, it's gonna be a council decision on because there's also an increased cost of maintaining those every year. So that's that's part of the conversation. I think we're trying to finish that up so we get a handle better on um, sidewalk issues, bike ped issues, sidewalk ramp issues. We're gonna have a better understanding of that townwide and then we can figure out how best to, to allocate those funds. But yeah, that's a possibility. I think with one of the things, with, you know, part of that plan is a complete streets plan that the town will be adopting. And that'll be coming to you at some point as well that requires us as the municipality and you know developers when they're doing developments to consider a complete street which means it's not just for vehicles you also got to consider pedestrians and bicyclists so when we have opportunities even if it's a small area it's worth doing um, charter roads an example uh, when we pay when we first before we paved it was 14 foot wide lanes we striped back 11 foot wide lanes for traffic calming and it, it, so it serves a dual role of providing some space for bicyclists so yeah, I mean, sometimes with Walker Hill Road, you get to the end of that and then you're back into an area that doesn't have it. Um, but that's, some, that's the conversations we'll be having, I think, in the near term as to how we want to address that. It would seem that if we're planning on building these 2021-ish, it sounds like, um, that hopefully we get those plans in the next few months so that we can start to secure funding in order to not do things haphazardly, but do things with thoughtfulness and in a more complete way, as you described. Yep. Um, the, I'm curious, I know we're, you know we're talking about the large construction with some of the ponds. The dredging is tremendously expensive, as you know. Um, is there thought about turning those ponds back into its actual natural habitat before the, those are all privately built 
well, maybe not all of them, but I, I thought I remember that they were privately built dams at one point in the past. Um, I can't speak to that. I don't know when they were sure. built, how they were built. Um, but DEP, you know, does have a program. Actually, they encourage removal of dams where it's feasible. Um, that is something that can, you know, doesn't always is doesn't always go over easily for people who are used to having a pond in their backyard, and then it's going to go away. Right. But I think with Bell Pond, that's a different situation, just given where it is in the watershed. But some of the upper ponds, that was one of the things that was pointed out when they did the inspections that as one of the options we could look at if removal was an option. So that is a discussion we, we could have. It seems like the, and fill me in, it seems like maintaining dams is sort of tremendously expensive over, over time. Is that generally accurate? I mean, upgrade over 10, 15, 20 years and you have to go back in to retain water for is the per is the per is there a purpose to retain the water other than somebody built it ages ago or they could have been built built for various purposes <clears throat> it might have been somebody <clears throat> wanted the water for some particular use um, sometimes they're put in for flood control as well because they do offer flood mm -hmm. storage capacity which will hold back water and, and limit and meter it out of town kind of like we do on a private development you see detention basins the water flows in it kind of it gets metered out so it goes out slowly you do the same thing on town wide basins or watershed uh, management plans. So, you know, there's considerations uh, as to where that's necessary and where it's not. Um, I think with this Gulf Brook watershed we're talking about, Bell Pond Dam, given the state roads below it, I think they had good reason to do what they had, had done putting it in. Um, but that certainly is, a, is an option that could be discussed if that's something that uh, council wants to investigate pursuing. Are the ponds there, aside from Bell Pond, are they, were they built for water retention purposes, you know, for flood, flood control? I can't speak. I don't know offhand why. I mean, we may have some records on when they were built, but, I mean, this town's been around a long time, so I don't know if we will. Um, but, you know, that's something that is not an exercise I've gone through at this point. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. No other questions? Okay. Thanks, Derek. All right. You're welcome. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Move over into uh, public comment. Anybody from the audience want to speak tonight? Mr. Colantonio? Good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Uh, nice presentation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but for the record, I believe uh, a few years ago I talked with the town engineer in Rocky Hill, and I think the town of Rocky Hill is responsible for their sidewalks. Now, things have changed? I don't know. The sidewalk is very dear to me because I'm a stubborn guy, I guess. In 1983, the council, 1983, 85, whatever, many years ago, some of the notes say that, you know, we should rebuild the sidewalk on Morrison Avenue. This was done many years ago, 30 years ago. It was done only a few, few years ago. And what it bothers me is that basically we were assessed X amount of dollars to pay for the sidewalk. And I said, why? I, and I haven't paid it yet. If every street in town had a sidewalk and everybody would get assessed according, it's fine. But I don't think there is equality at all. Now, keep in mind, the sidewalk is under my, it's not on my property. But yet, I have to shovel the snow and I have to just, you know, maintain it. I don't mind that. But when you charge me to rebuild a full sidewalk or a, or a slab, cost costs $500 probably, you know, it's a lot of money. Now, if everybody had a sidewalk in town, I wouldn't mind that if everybody would get treated. Uh, I guess Church Street between Walker Hill and, uh, and toward the school on the north side, well, there is a house or two, there is no sidewalks. It's been like that for many years. It seems to me that that's where you need the sidewalk. That's where the school is. People are going to walk around. How long is it going to take before somebody really put their foot down and says, hey, we need a sidewalk. Now, it's been like, you know, many years that I've been here, but I don't get an answer. 
I guess a few months ago, I, I had a question regarding uh, the amount of signs on Walker Hill, Walker Hill Road and the driveway to the high school. Unbelievable. Now, at my age, I'm getting older, so even if I go 30 miles per hour, if, if I try to read all the signs, I could not read it anyway because I'm getting slow. But, but I ask the question, and I never get an answer. And I do not expect an answer right now. But after a few meetings, after six months, I mean, you know, the least that you guys can do it, it's address my question, not just mine. Well, that's why probably we don't have all, you know, too many people right here. But anyway, one little sign says, on the, on the northbound. Now, keep in mind, before I say what the little sign says, in front of the driveway, Walker Hill Road, it's three lanes. Assume that's 12 foot lanes. One to go south, one to go north, and one to turn left and right, I guess, you know. And that's all it is, it's from curb to curb. And one of the signs says, no parking and school days. What does it mean? What does that mean? That I can go there on Saturday in the northbound direction? There is a lane, I can park there and I'm, I'm okay? I mean, the sign says no parking during school days. Saturday it's not a school day or Sunday it's not a school day. So why does, what does that sign say? I don't understand. I've been an engineer now for, I worked as an engineer for 37 years and and some of the things that I see in town are unbelievable. Do they bother me? Does it make any difference? No. Do they bother me a lot? Yes, they do. Because as a town, we should be proud of what we do. Derek, if you look into it. <laughs> Another little thing that you're trying to remove the impervious uh, you know, payment around from Jordan Lane to, to Hartford and Silas Dean in both directions. We have two lanes that basically go to Hartford. There is only one lane each, each direction. Can we ask the town to do, no, the state to do something with that? Again, I asked that question many months ago, or many years, and yet I never got an answer. The decency of says, okay, guys, you know, I know what you're saying. We in, uh, investigated and it cannot be done. I would be happy with that. But for us to come on a, twice a month almost, Okay, whenever we can, and then we ask the question, and we never get an answer. Thank you for your time. Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to suggest, I mean, we have a full house tonight of two people from the public that maybe at some point you could relax or ease off on the five minute rule. I mean, it's not gonna kill anybody to let someone rabble on a little longer than five minutes and I'd like to suggest you do that at some point, especially on a night like tonight. Um, la at the last town council meeting, uh, you had the, auditor, the town auditors in here giving you a report. And along the, within their report, and granted uh, I, I didn't get a copy of that report that they were, hand that I think you have, that you, you had some extra ones, I'd like to get one as well as the management report. But they, they brought up the issue on their management report of the non-town non -town cash accounts. <clears throat> I'm sure we all remember that because I've spoke about that many times from up here as to what that was. And I had made some inquiries back some few years ago and came up empty handed. And my inquiry was, what started that? What started the auditors to call out for this non-town cash accounts? And a little, and I only picked up a little bit of information on it, and it was some ski club, 
some ski club in town that uh, was able to use, let the town run their, I guess, their general ledger for them. Uh, I take it it must also mean that they, they're able to have the seal for tax exemption. And I'm sure that there's other benefits that they get. And, and I don't even know who they are. But the fact remains, I did ask, and I got nowhere. Maybe with this new administration, maybe, you could get, maybe that could be provided before you give a check to the, to the auditors. Because I think they were already out by the time I was asking for it. They probably were already paid, and they probably said this to you, you know? And I, before you pay them, I think you should ask them to go back to their, into their records and find out what that was all about and share it with the public, and I'd like it too, because uh, I'd, I'd like to know who they are that was getting all these benefits from the town of Wethersfield, who were not town of Wethersfield. Town of Wethersfield officials were departments. Um, it was very interesting tonight to hear Mr. Gregor talk about these various uh, highways, uh, the one up on Jordan Lane, up to the, up to the city, city line, <coughs> uh, Hartford City Line, how much money that cost. Um, but there's a common little theme here that popped up was bike lanes. Bike lanes uh, squeeze the highway, made, the, dry, made the, the, the travel lanes for automobiles a little thinner in order to have bike lanes. Uh, Thornbush to Rocky Hill Line, more bike lanes and sidewalks. And then this old uh, Weathersfield Improvement for Program, Walking and Bikeways. You know, we also had bike a bikeway that hasn't happened yet, and that is to the entrance of the Putnam Bridge. And that's a, that's a $10, $12 million project on both sides to make it happen. And the bridge was built, was rebuilt, by the, the sake of 20 or 30 bicycle people. As a matter of fact, I understood that there only had 20 people at the meeting, and then they decided to put a sidewalk on the bridge as they were renovating the bridge. It only took a very small amount of people within a, a segment against the whole population that helped make that decision to spend another $10, 12000000 million. And it's really amazing because I went to the, one of those meetings and I spoke about it how it, that small amount of people made the rest of us spend so much and how bad it is. But that's the way our government has been operating. And uh, we, don't, we, don't need a, we don't need a sidewalk. But I think the state of Connecticut's going to pay for it eventually when they get tolls. And I think that's what it all boiled down to. Won't happen for a while, I hope. But uh, once they get tolls, everything is going to happen. It's just more tax, borrow, and spend. And the same with these three, three different projects that, you, that Mr. Gregor was talking about tonight. The grants, where do the grants come from? They come from all the rest of us and more. Like all, it's all state borrowed money. It's not excess money. And, and, and I'm sitting out here thinking about the road from Jordan Lane up to Harford all that money that had to be had to be spent, and um, if we probably could have paid for it if our taxes weren't as high as they are, our state taxes, uh, we could have saved probably a lot of money with all the administration and nonsense and unions that they have involved in that. And, and I wonder how much more nonsense we're going to see on Thornbush, because they're going to control. And, and the same thing with the improvements down in the old Weathersfield. We continue to see government that's just gobbling up our money and because of their conditions that they put on as they give you. And, and we need to get away from that. I've often said from this podium, if we all from Weathersfield just paid to the town treasury, 
what our fair share is and the hell with the rest of them and let the town give them five or six thousand a year to run the state that that, that would be the way to do it thank but you anyway, Mr. Young. um huh? we've allotted you uh i gave you a couple extra minutes so. oh, you, oh you mean i talk that much okay thank you no you you've got time at the end to come back so thank you but uh you do make a very good point and very valid point i think with the weather tonight and uh lack of much discussion on uh, for council action yeah just you and uh, mr co antonio i think we can grant uh, a couple extra minutes for the public to, <laughs> to speak um you've got your turn coming up mr co antonio um okay well thank you uh i don't see any hearings or ordinances or resolutions on here uh reports from boards or commissions anybody have anything to report councilwoman bella Okay, um, the Historical Society had their gingerbread house decorating party on Sunday. Um, I was unable to attend, but I heard it was a great success. Tuesday is Giving Tuesday. The Historical Society is um, asking anybody who's interested in donating on Giving Tuesday to give to their um, to the Historical Society. They're hoping to raise thirty-five hundred dollars to help with some improvements to buildings. Um, the Historical Society is involved with Holidays on Main this Thursday, December 5th. And finally, the Herbert Dunham House is decked out for the holidays and will be open on the 7th, uh, Saturdays, December 7th and 14th, and Sundays, the 8th and 15th. So if you've never been through that house, it's um, a great time to do that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Councilman Mazzarella. Uh, I attended the uh, Senior Citizens Advisory Committee meeting on the 21st and listened to a presentation uh, from Ryan Biggs on the Veterans Commission. Um, he gave us a short presentation on his goals of the commission. And they've been working diligently to uh, try and identify all the veterans in town and their spouses. Um, some of you may have seen uh, their people out at the toll at the uh, polls, rather, uh, on election day. It's got tolls on the mind. Yeah, tolls. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have a short survey, ten question survey that they're trying to get uh, veterans to complete, so they can identify the number of veterans in town. They believe it's somewhere around 1,200. Um, they haven't gotten a very good response to date. I think they had about 90 surveys completed. Uh, so we're asking everybody to try and spread the word that if uh, you know a, of a veteran or a veteran spouse, uh, if they could uh, get a hold of one of those surveys through us or uh, Ryan, um, we'd like to get those completed to help them out. Um, their ultimate goal is to be able to inform veterans of all the benefits that uh, they're entitled to that they may may not be aware of and uh, I'm told it's quite extensive uh, even for spouses so uh, hopefully the word will get around I also attended a planning and zoning meeting on the 14th and I guess I'll call it a lively meeting regarding an application for a special permit to allow for outdoor kennel at uh, Beaver Road wag time play and stay <clears throat> There has been uh, quite a bit of noise complaints from neighbors, mostly from Lincoln, Dorchester, and Garden Streets. Uh, the noise has been going on since about April, and they've been uh, frustrated with trying to get some response. So the uh, owners of Wag Time had presented a uh, findings report from the sound engineer. They took some readings, and they have a uh, some proposals for uh, sound barrier fence uh, that uh, they feel would resolve the issue with the noise uh, propagating to uh, the neighborhood. The hearing was tabled. Uh, there was lacking some more information. And uh, it's on the agenda tomorrow night in uh, council chambers, 7 o'clock. And uh, hopefully they'll uh, come to some resolution. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, council, uh, well, actually, no discussion items right now. Council actions. Um, no final action for tonight. We have the 
2019 State Homeland Security Grant Program. And um, Mr. Town Manager. Sure, I'll give a very quick overview. Thank you, Mayor, and to the Council. This agreement uh, that's in front of you tonight allows the town to access regional funds that also benefit the local community. In recent years, we've purchased equipment, sent officers to training, and covered the cost for participation in regional SWAT or CREST team exercises. Uh, in 2017, we purchased about $60,000 in equipment. 2018, we went through some, um, this, uh, we're able to send officers to breach training. So this is, this is a regional fund that impacts us locally and is beneficial to us. There's no cost to the town. But if we want access to the funds, we have to agree to participate. Okay, good to know. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the uh, write-up, the last item is uh, cybersecurity. Uh, is there any opportunities for the town to uh, do anything with that cybersecurity issue that we uh, actually came up in the presentation uh, at the last meeting? Yep, with the auditors. Yeah. Uh, there always is. So this, we're at the point where they're just uh, accessing the funds from the federal government. They actually haven't carved out the uses yet. Um, there is a commission through the uh, Council of Governments that will determine kind of where the buckets of money will go. And then we could, if cybersecurity comes up, which more than likely it will, although I can't say certainly, but it is obviously heightened um, uh, <clears throat> in the media, we would have the ability to apply or access the funds if they become available for that particular usage. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion? Uh, make a motion to authorize the town manager to execute any and all documents related to the memorandum of agreement regarding the use of federal year 2019 state homeland security grant funding in custodial ownership of regional assets in the division of emergency management and homeland security region three. Do I have a second? Second, Mayor. Okay, uh, motions made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Okay. Uh, now to something we had just heard about with uh, um, Mr. Uh, Gregor's comments on the Highland <coughs> Street project uh, from Rocky Hill to Thornbush. Um, I guess uh, if you want to follow up with some information more pertinent to this actual item. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Uh, d just quickly, um, to reiterate, uh, this is a lot SIP application um, for funding, $987,600. Um, this is one of two applications that were submitted. It's about 3,500 feet of road that we would need to be doing as part of our paving program anyway at some point. Um, this way it is paid for state funds. Uh, there is no cost to the town as the design will be done in-house, so there's no surveying design cost outside of staff time. Uh, it's 100% funded with the funds that we get. Um, there's some additional, in addition to road work, there's some additional sidewalk improvements that we, um, sidewalk extension that we generally don't have money to fund, so it gives us an opportunity to make a connection um, that would benefit uh, the neighborhoods in both Rocky Hill and Weathersfield. Um, at this point, we're just looking for uh, authorization to uh, accept, the, accept the award. Uh, so we can move forward with the uh, with the design and processing, and hopefully have it out to construction by the end of 2020. Councilor Mazzarella, uh, <clears throat> Derek, on the uh, on the Walker Hill Road project, you you were uh, opted to sub out the uh, the design work and uh, so on uh, of approximately two hundred thousand dollars. Do you have a feel for what? our in-house in costs are for, for this project? Is it, is it along those same lines, $100,000 in, in man hours? And generally, uh, generally rule of thumb on projects are somewhere between five and 15% is your cost of design. So if it's a million dollar project, um, you're looking at you know, somewhere between 50 and 100,000 probably on a job like this. It really depends on the scope. Um, I'd have to, Put a little more t thought into t staff time and hours spent to give you an actual number, but yeah, I was I would just say trying to get an idea of how much you know, preparing all the bids and all that. You know, it's got to it's got to add up. I would imagine. So yeah, it, it does. Um, 
yeah, like I said, usually five to 15% is a good, a good average to go with. I'd say probably a little on the lower side because it's kind of a simple project, but yeah, probably 75,000, let's say, that we're not spending because we could do it in-house. Point I'm trying to make is that it's, it's not totally free money that you know it's, it's staff time it's a good opportunity but yet it's still going to take a lot of your staff's time and, and uh, it well, does I have mean, a cost so th that is that is a good point because i have that i had that thought myself is we're pretty strapped as it is to keep up so you know it's great we're getting these awards and these funds but it, there is still a, a time even if we're hiring a consultant there's still a lot of management and oversight time that we have that we don't have today that we will have but um, you know, obviously this is, uh, I think, a good opportunity for the town, so I think we should take advantage. Thank you. Anybody else? Derek, I had a quick question. Uh, starting work spring of 2020 or, 2020 or completing fall of 2020? This project, Highland Street? Yeah, Highland Street. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm hoping um, to have it out to bid mid, late spring and for a summer of construction yep. and finish up early fall. I mean, that would be ideal. Um, okay. I haven't, this is the first one we've been through, uh, this first one I've been through in Weathersfield, so I've gone through this process with this funding program, so I, I haven't been through it yet, so I, I don't want to speak for sure, but that's what my anticipation is based on my conversations I've had with Krog. You actually just reminded me of something. I, I'm sorry I didn't mention it earlier when you mentioned f spring and fall. How are we looking uh, with um, state dollars, uh, bond commission money. Uh, I know the towns typically receive about $60 million a year. Um, the first allocation of the $30 million was in January. The second one in July of another $30 million has been held up at the state level. Is that impacting us at all, and would that impact this project at all? Actually, it wouldn't impact this project because it's all state-funded. But are there any other projects that maybe impacted by this uh potentially if it impacts any of our low sip or tar money uh, that could have an effect on how much you know we can do um generally at this time of year we're closing out the books on our uh, encumbrances for this year and looking at what the tax revenue is coming in in the january so we can figure out what we, we start planning for how many roads we could really do in the spring I mean, we have a plan but sometimes we have to make some adjustments based on what's available mm -hmm. um so yeah it, it might have some effect um, I'd have to talk with the finance director to see where we are. Actually, right now he's he's getting me some of that information so I can start planning the next couple of programs that we have coming up. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Uh, is there a motion? I'd like to motion to authorize the town manager to accept and execute any and all documents related to funds totaling $987,600 from the CTDOT through the Capital Region Council of Governments for pavement rehabilitation along Highland Street from Rocky Hill Town Line to Thornbush Road. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion's made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Motion's adopted. Thank, Thank you, Derek. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Looks like uh, we can go right into minutes, approval of minutes. November 11th, the special meeting. Minutes. Any questions, concerns, comments on those? Okay. All those in favor of approval of the November 11th uh, special meeting minutes uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. I think you need a, I think oh, you need a motion. I do need a motion. Yeah. It's a thing. I can't do it. <laughs> I think okay, Matt's I a, making a motion. I'll be happy to make a motion for you, Mayor. Uh, move yeah. the acceptance of the November 11, 2019 special meeting minutes. Can I get a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. I'll do this again for the November 18th minutes. Uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Force, you can't make a motion on this one. Actually, maybe you can. Actually, I you can. Were, you were here. Well, it doesn't make a difference. I still have the ability to make the motion. Um, I believe I do, too. You do. Um, uh, all those, uh, can I have a motion to approve the uh, minutes for the November 18th regular meeting? I'll make a motion. Uh, second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Um, public comments? 
Mr. Young. Good evening, good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, Mr. Gregor spoke about his staff uh, working on some of these projects. And, and you know, I understand staff is supposed to work on these projects, such as road paving, yet a few years later, you start seeing the seams open up. And it really makes me wonder about the quality of our oversight from our engineering people. And uh, I, I find that pretty disturbing because a few years later, it's costing us thousands of dollars now to put that strip of tar down and, and fix that little gap that starts to open up. Uh, so I think it's something to ask about. And, you know, I've said in the past, we, when we do have these people put in paving for us, they do a good job, not just a job. And they really need to be some oversight put on them to make sure that they do it right. Uh, there is a right way and there's a wrong way. Obviously, there's been a lot of wrong ways done in this town with our paving projects. You know, I paid, my, my, when my tax bill came out this year, my taxes went up $590. And I find that pretty disturbing that my taxes went up. $590 extra. And it makes me wonder how many others had increases like that, or if I were the only one, and that I was singled out. I wonder about that. But you know, I've been, I've been urging my town council for years to try to cut back costs. And not once have I seen costs get cut back. Not once. I talk about the issue, it's ignored. Talk about another issue, it's ignored. I hope you folks don't do this, the new council. You know, when you negotiate these contracts with our employees, there's such a thing as when they finally retire and they start collecting their unemployment, or I should say their social security, they get a thing called Medicare B reimbursement. It equals today $1,300 roughly of a payment back to them that the town cuts a check every six months for half of that amount. Your citizens out here who come to the budget hearing, there's a lot of elderly people who collect Social Security. They don't get that. But now they're forced to pay through their regular real estate taxes to give someone else that benefit of getting their reimbursement of Medicare B for, their for the town retirees. And I think that's wrong. I mean, it equals 300, you know, a lot of money. It's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars that, would, that the town cuts checks out. And I hope that you folks would look into that. We also heard about this thing called the Tempco roof contract, where some, this Tempco company comes and checks our roofs. Why aren't our own people doing that? You know, these are expensive contracts. I, I don't get it. We, we need to find some ways of cutting back costs. And it also goes back, Mayor, as I mentioned at the earlier discussion that we had here about the other extra five minutes. If you did extend that extra five minutes, you might get more citizens to come in than just two. And you might get, get some of them to share what they might know about this town where costs could occur and, and that you could, you could cut back. You know, in the past, it was very strict about the five-minute rule, and, and people didn't even want to come here because of that. So maybe you want to think about that. Also, I noticed during the... Um, a few months ago, our, town, our former town council had, had given away CDBG money that was saved up. Uh, it was 63000 They gave it to the housing authority. And I don't think that should be happening. The housing authority is, um, they got these pitiful little houses around town, in the northern section especially, I guess down near the center down here also. Um, we should think of some way of trying to eliminate that. 
It doesn't bring money and it doesn't add value to our community. These duplexes, that, that's what I'm talking about. It makes great open space if they were removed. You know, our, our, town, our Board of Education emphasizes uh, this one cost called uh, extra pay. It rings a bell of around $500,000, $600,000 a year. And now they just added this past year another $23,000, $24,000 for two more coaches for, for soccer or whatever the heck it was. But this extra pay just keeps building up on us taxpayers. And, you know, it's hard to pay taxes when they just keep ramping up. And mine went up $590 this year. I don't know why. Okay, our teachers. Young. It was mentioned by our town uh, superintendent that our teachers were paid an extra 12.8% on their salaries. And that's another hit. That'd be a lot of money if you could hold back on increases, Mayor. Thank you. We'll try our best. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. No other further comments? Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All those I, in favor? Excuse me, okay. is that going to executive session or no? no. I don't believe so. No. no. Okay. Oh, any correspondence that you got to read into the record by any chance? No. I thought that's what you meant. Okay. Motion's made, seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. We are adjourned.